asking for. Okay, so a lot of you guys. Um, I'm going to teach you guys the DHS cheer to welcome you guys to our school. So this is how the DHS cheer goes. D H S. All right, so I'm going to break you guys off into three groups, and we're going to do the DHS cheer together. So the first group, you guys are going to say D. Say it. D. And you guys in the middle will say H. A. And at the end, you guys will say S. So when I point to you, I want you guys to say your number. Ready? Is everyone ready? All right. D. you guys learn a little bit about music. So there are two really important uh, components of music that I want to teach you guys today. And one of them is rhythm and the other one is dynamics. So three really common rhythms in music are quarter notes, eighth notes, and sixteenth notes. So quarter notes sound like this. Ta, 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 ta. And eighth notes are twice as fast as those quarter notes. The eighth notes will sound like this. Ta 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 ta. And sixteenth notes, finally, sixteenth notes are twice as fast as eighth notes and four times as fast as four, uh, chord notes. So uh, sixteenth notes will sound like this. Ta 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 ta. All right. Now that we've learned dynamics, um, let's move on to. Now that we've learned rhythm, let's move on to dynamics. So dynamics are how loud the music is gonna be. So there are three types of dynamics and one of them is pianos and piano is really quiet. So piano is down here. Can everyone say piano? Yeah. Mezzo forte is more of a medium level. Mezzo forte is like your speaking voice. Everyone say mezzo forte. Mezzo forte. And now forte is when you're really excited so you're really loud. Everybody say forte. Forte. All right, awesome. So now that we know dynamics, now that we know rhythm, we're going to blend those two together in order to create what I'm going to call a snowstorm because in Ugly Duckling there's a scene where the duck is stuck in a snowstorm and if we do this right we'll be able to create a snowstorm. So what, basically what we're going to do is we're going to have quarter notes be at a piano and then we're going to play um, eighth notes that are going to be mezzo forte and then finally sixteenth notes that are going to be played at a forte level. So is everyone ready? Yeah! Yeah, all right. Quarter notes. Huh. Eighth notes. Ta 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 So another really important part of music, of course, is the melody. Melody is probably what you think about when you think about music. So does anyone know the melody, Row, Row, Row Your Boat? Yeah. Yeah? Wow, okay, that's most of you. So just in case um, anyone needs a refresher, we're all gonna sing Row, Row, Row Your Boat together right now. Ready? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Okay, so with that row, row, row melody, um, we are going to play what's called a round. And a round is basically a melody that starts at different times in order to, to all come together to create a harmony. So can the cheer team please demonstrate to us what that would sound like? All right, yeah. So I want you guys to participate in this round. So the first section, you guys are gonna be first. Um, and then the middle section, you guys are gonna start singing when I point to you and after they say boat. And the last section is also going to start singing when I point to you and after the middle section says boat. So do you think you can do this? 
Yeah? All right. Ready? Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. Row, row, row your boat. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Merrily, life is but a dream. That was beautiful. Oh my God, you guys. That was so awesome. Okay, so Ugly Duckling um, is about the Ugly Duck, of course, but there are also multiple um, other farm animals that you'll encounter in this story. And so I want you guys right now for this next exercise to choose your favorite farm animal and make the farm animal sound. And we're gonna use dynamics that we learned about earlier to control the loudness of the farm animal. So my hand, when it's down here, I want you guys to be piano. When it's in the middle, mezzo forte. And when it's up high, I want you guys to be forte. So everybody choose your favorite farm animal sound. Um, mine's gonna be quack, but you can choose anything from meow or moo or oink. Okay, let's get started. Ready? Everybody got their animal sounds? Okay, let's start piano. farm animal sounds, but you all came together to create one big um, farm animal noise. It's kind of like how the orchestra works. We all play different instruments, but all together we create a symphony orchestra. Um, speaking of a symphony orchestra, I think we have a little problem. Um, so basically these high schoolers last night, they didn't get a lot of sleep. So they're backstage right now uh, taking a nap. And without them, the show can't go on. So I need your guys' help to wake them up for me. And so we're gonna do the DHS cheer again, but instead of DHS, we're going to say orchestra. So your, this section will be or, this middle section will be ke, and the last section will be stra. Okay, we gotta be as loud as possible so these high schoolers wake up, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to the Richard Brunel Performance Hall and this morning's performance of The Ugly Duckling. In the unlikely event of an emergency, please stay seated and listen to theater staff for directions. We would like to thank the Davis School Orchestral Music Association for sponsoring today's performance and promoting a vision of comprehensive musical education for all students in the Davis Joint Unified School District. Thank you, and please enjoy The Ugly Duckling.
My name is Richard Marino. I'm the orchestra director here at Davis High. And the awesome orchestra sitting behind me is the Davis High School Symphony Orchestra. Can you guys give it up for these wonderful musicians? <laughs> orchestra, will you say hello to the young kids in the audience? Great, perfect. Now, we started today's performance with the full symphony orchestra sound so you could hear what all the instruments sound like when they blend together. In a moment, you're going to hear every individual instrument, okay? Now, we have two goals for you today. One is for you to have a really fun and good time. Are you already having fun? Yeah! Okay. Mission accomplished then. Goal number two is that we're hoping that when you're looking into the orchestra, you can find that one special instrument, maybe two, maybe three, who knows, that you really like, you the sound of, you like the look of, and one that you'd like to play yourself and learn. Now, the great thing about the school district we're all in is all the schools you're from offer music instruction. Okay, so starting in fourth grade, you get to choose a string instrument. And then in fifth grade, you get to choose a woodwind, brass, or percussion. So every student has the opportunity to play music. And today, we're hoping to inspire and motivate you to find that one or two or three special instruments that you'll enjoy to play. So let's take a look into the orchestra. And we're going to listen to every instrument individually. So maybe you can find one that you like the best. Um, let's take a look at the front of the orchestra first. Um, all the string players, wave your bows in the air. Great, okay, and the first violins, hold up your instruments. There they are. And the second violins, where are you at today? Great, and the viola section, there's the violas. And cellos, there they go. And the basses, let's see if they can lift those basses up. Oh, there they are. Now, let's take a look and a listen here to what the violin sounds like. Thank you, violin. And Jeremy, can we listen to your viola? All right, thank you, viola. And Ho Jun, can we take a listen to what a cello sounds like right there in the front there? Okay, thank you, cello. And Nelly, can we listen to your big string bass there? All right, thank you, bass. Now, if you look into the center of the orchestra, we have what's called the woodwind family. And in the woodwinds, we have the flutes. Let's see what the flutes look like. There we go. We have a little baby flute called the piccolo. Let's see what the baby flute, there's the piccolo, good. Okay, we have the oboe. There's the oboe. And we have the clarinets right behind them. And we have the bassoon, the biggest woodwind instrument. Great, let's take a listen to each of these. Let's hear the flute first. And you're going to hear the piano accompanying the flute.
Thank you, flute. And let's take a listen to what the oboe sounds like. The oboe, everybody. And let's take a listen to the piccolo. All right. Thank you, piccolo. And next, behind the flutes, we have the clarinet. Clarinet. And let's hear what the big bad bassoon sounds like today. All right, the bassoon, everybody. And if you look into the very last row of the symphony, you'll see some very cool looking shiny brass instruments. It's the brass section. Let's see those instruments. There they go. And on the far left, we have a French horn. Let's hear what the French horn sounds like. Thank you, Frank Thorne. And let's take a listen to our trumpet. The trumpet, everybody. And on the far left, we have the trombone. Okay, thank you, trombone. Now, if you look way in the back of the viola section here, you'll see some very large drums, the kettle drums or the timpani. Carter, let's hear what the timpani sound like. All right, the timpani, everybody. And right behind the piano, we have an assortment of percussion instruments. We have a bass drum, a snare drum, we have cymbals, a triangle, wind chime. Let's hear what the percussion sounds like. All right, the percussion, everybody. 
Now you guys ready to hear the entire symphony play together? Okay, good. You want to hear the story of the Ugly Duckling, right? Yeah! All right, let's get the show going here. Will you help me to recognize our awesome narrator, Mr. Michael Lackey? Next to the water, there sat a mother duck on her nest, waiting for her eggs to hatch. Suddenly, with a tap tap, one shell cracked, and then another, and from each egg came a little creature that raised its head and cried, Peek, peek! The smallest egg is still here. But not a moment later, tap, tap. The small egg broke, and the newest baby made a very strange cry. He was very small and ugly. The duck stared. You are nothing like the others. Are you a turkey? Well, we'll find out soon because now we must all go down to the water and swim. And with that, the mother duck jumped in with a splash. And one after another, the little ducklings jumped in too. Even little ugly duckling jumped in and swam along with them. Thank goodness, said Mother Duck. He's not a turkey after all. For indeed, Ugly Duckling could swim more gracefully than all his brothers and sisters. said Mother Duck. I want to introduce you to all the barnyard, but you must keep close to me or you could get stepped on. And above all, beware of the cat. As Mother and her ducklings entered the barnyard, the others stared in awe. Ducks and cows and chickens and even the farmer's cat.
This is the way of the world, said Mother Duck. In a moment, I will introduce you to the Grand Dam, the highest born duck of all. She is very important. When you meet her, you must bow your heads grimly and wait for her approval. Come, and let's practice our bows. Yes, yes, don't turn your toes. Now bend your necks and say quack. Mother Duck took her ducklings to meet the Grand Dam. A hush fell on the barnyard as Mother and her ducklings followed the path to the Grand Dam. The Grand Dam turned, scowling as they drew closer. But the ducklings, terrified, did as they were told, bowing and quacking as pretty as they could. Even ugly ducklings made a long, low, and lovely bow. The granddam strutted around each of the ducklings, eyeing them severely. This one is very ugly, she exclaimed, and bit ugly duckling on the neck. But he's dead. And swims even better than the others. I think he just stayed in the egg too long. I see, said the old duck. The barnyard elders gathered around her. The cows, the rooster, even the cat. They whispered and pointed and scowled and whispered again. Finally, the granddam turned and walked up to the mother. away. And so they were all welcomed, all but poor ugly duckling. All of the other creatures tormented him. The ducks bit him, the chickens pecked him, and the girl who fed the animals kicked him. So it went on from day to day, getting worse and worse. September day, he couldn't stand it any longer. So he ran away, frightening the birds as he flew over the hedges. He flew until he came out on a large moor inhabited, inhabited by wild geese. When the wild geese saw him, they stared at him. What sort of duck are you, they asked, coming around him. He bowed to them politely, but was afraid to speak. You are exceedingly ugly, said the geese. But what do we care? Why don't you join us? So Ugly Duckling did just that, and they flew off into the horizon. Duckling and the wild geese came out onto a large lake, surrounded by rushes and wild trees. There they swam and played in the water all day.
shots. Two geese fell dead. More guns echoed, and the whole flock of wild geese rose up into the air. Guns and shouting were everywhere as hunters surrounded the moor. Blue smoke from the guns rose like clouds, and dogs bounded in among the Russians. Ugly Duckling was terrified. Just then, a large, terrible dog poked his nose at the Duckling, showing his sharp teeth. A whistle, and the dog splashed back into the water, leaving the Duckling alone. I'm so ugly, even a dog won't bite me. Ugly Duckling hid while the shots went on and on. Finally, it was silent. silent. Ugly Duckling had survived, but as he came out of the rushes, he knew that he was alone once more. As the sun set, a large flock of the most beautiful birds appeared. The duckling had never seen any like them before. They were swans. The swans uttered a singular cry, spread their glorious wings, and flew up into the heavens. As they rose higher and higher in the air, Ugly Duckling watched in awe. Oh, he wished he could be as wonderful as they. days were swiftly turning colder. Winter was on its way. Poor ugly duckling. Not only was he very hungry, but he had to swim about on the water just to keep it from freezing. circles and more circles but every night the space on which he swam became smaller and smaller finally finally winter was really here the snow gently fell until everything was covered in white. It grew so cold that the ice and the water crackled as he moved. An ugly duckling had to paddle as fast as he could to keep the space from closing up around him.
ugly duckling tried to keep going, but he became exhausted at last. no more energy in him. He could do nothing but lay still and helpless, frozen fast in the ice. peasant passed by, gathering firewood. As he picked up a stick by the frozen shore, he saw poor ugly duckling frozen in the ice. With his wooden shoe, he cracked the ice. Then he carried the limp duckling home to his wife before returning to his work. The peasant's wife gently laid ugly duckling in a basket next to the stove. The warmth slowly revived the poor little creature and finally he lifted his head. Seeing he was awake, the peasant's children wanted to play with him, but the duckling thought they would hurt him, so he started up in terror. He fluttered into the milk pan and splashed milk all over the room. Next, he flew into the, the butter, then into the flour. What a mess he was! The woman screamed, the children laughed and shouted, tumbling over each other trying to catch him. At that moment, the peasant opened the door, his arms full of wood. Seeing the open door, ugly duckling flew forward, forward startling but peasant. Wood fell everywhere. Ugly duckling lunged, flying out of the door. He finally landed, exhausted, in the newly fallen snow. It would be very sad were I to relate all the misery that the poor little duckling endured during the hard winter. Breaking the ice, digging through snow, just to find a morsel to sustain him. the warm sun shining and saw that it was spring. Then it, the 
young bird felt that his wings were strong as he flapped them against his sides and rose high into the air. He flew onward, and before he knew it, he found himself coming to a large pond surrounded by a beautiful garden, fresh with the signs of spring. The acryl trees were in bloom, and the elders bent their branches down to the stream. Close by came three beautiful swans. The duckling remembered the lovely birds and felt more sad than ever. I will fly to those birds, he thought, and they will kill me because I am so ugly and dare to approach them. But it doesn't matter. Better to be killed by them than bit by the ducks, pecked by the chickens, shot at by hunters, or starved into winter. Then he threw to the water and swam towards the beautiful swans. The moment they saw him, they rushed to meet him. He bent his head down to the surface of the water and awaited death. But what did he see in the clear stream below? His own image, no longer a dark, ugly, gray bird, but a graceful and beautiful swan. All of his sorrow melted away as the great swans swam around him and stroked his neck with their beaks as a welcome. Into the garden came some little children and threw bread into water. The youngest cried, look, there's a new one, and it's the most beautiful of all, as the old swans bowed their heads before him. He was so happy, and yet not at all proud. He had been persecuted and despised for his ugliness. And now he heard them say that he was the most beautiful of all the birds. He rustled his feathers and cried joyfully, I never dreamed I could be this happy when I was an ugly duckling.
Mr. Michael Lackey, everybody. And the Davis High School Symphony Orchestra, everybody. Give it up. All right, thank you so much. Did you guys have a good time? Yeah! All right, great. Well, we hope that you heard a wonderful instrument that you want to think about learning in the future, maybe two or three, like I said. Um, and at the end of the show here, once I release everybody, we're going to have all the instruments come down here. So teachers, please bring your students down so they can see each instrument um, up close and personal. We're going to have all the dancers up here as well. Um, but before we do that, I just want to recognize a very special person in the audience. We are so fortunate to have the composer of the Ugly Duckling here in our audience, Mrs. Betsy Lackey. Where are you at, Betsy? Where's Betsy? There she is. Thank you, Betsy. And everybody, if you enjoyed today's show, we'd ask that you go home and tell a friend, tell the rest of your family because tomorrow we're going to be doing this concert, an encore performance for the community, um, Saturday morning. The, sh the doors open at 10.30. The show will start at 11. So we hope to see you all back again tomorrow morning. All right, have a great day. We'll see you here next time, next year.